Nicolas Cage's comedy films. Now, I think all these films, all these six films are first time watches for me. I've never heard any of them. So I was both excited, but also kind of worried because a movie like G-Force is an animated film and it's like animated film, like rats and guinea pigs. But the first movie is Amos and Andrew. Based off the poster and cast, it had Nicolas Cage and Samuel Jackson. That got me really hyped up, really excited because I like both of these actors. Both of these actors now, maybe even back then, well regarded as really good actors. And once I found out the whole plot of the movie was just basically all a misunderstanding, the movie was a lot of fun because you got nosy as neighbors, being nosy, thinking that Samuel Jackson's bringing in his own house, call the cops, they're useless, people from Andrew's side, they start coming in as well. So this whole movie is a satire and just kind of everything. Okay, maybe not everything, but it's a satire at you know the cops local cops being kind of dumb not knowing what they're doing nosy as neighbors the stigma and i guess racial stigma as well and all that stuff so that stuff was really fun so starting with the nosy neighbors they have a dog they live next to samuel jackson and they think it's a black man bringing to one of their neighbor's houses who had just moving out and so they don't know that samuel jackson owned the house and so because of this it has a domino effect of calling the local police and once they do the police are here they're useless it's all a misunderstanding they can't hear they almost killed Samuel Jackson. One specific cop, I think it is Brad Dorf, aka Chucky himself. He's in his movie and he's hilarious. He's that dumb cop that does everything wrong. He somewhat runs into a car, not runs into a car, but like just stand next to it. The alarm goes off, I think. Once he like has dirt on his face, I think that's supposed to be blackface. Same thing for Nick Cage, I think it's supposed to be. Maybe I'm just kind of thinking too hard on that, which I don't know the history of, but all I know is that it's not particularly nowadays really good to do that. He like goes into like the makeup trailer for one time. I don't know why he did. Oh no, wait a minute. I know why, because he went to go repaint his face he had a one time the sheriff the main sheriff brushed it off and there's a scene of him going into the makeup room all of the news outlets and media like trailers how they even became cops is really questionable the main sheriff's also dumb he's a bit more wise but he's still kind of an idiot as well the whole police department shooting aggressively the film also starts off beyond the sea with that song so i already was like okay i already like this film because it starts off with that song i just heard it in quiet place part two so i was like all right you know what this is a good film there might have been a chance that I could have been wrong about that. Nicolas Cage is also a really dumb character. He thought where he was going in this like county was Canada, but it's not. But he also has a go-to. I don't know why. You also get to see the craziness of Nick Cage, like crazy eyes or him going kind of berserk. A part of that is in here once he goes in the house and talks to Samuel Jackson. I really like that part of him just going crazy. And then Samuel Jackson probably has the best story in terms of like the reason why he moved there was to get away from his childhood area and neighborhood. He grew up just kind of in a bad place and he thought moving here would help and just kind of get away from that turns out it really wouldn't but the whole point of this movie is Amos and Andrew Nicolas Cage and Samuel Jackson and it's a lot of fun seeing these two banter with each other telling life stories telling what they believe in and whatnot I would have been actually kind of pissed if half of it dealt with you know other stuff and the movie does go to like the cop side and the news outlets Pat Dora of crazy ass motherfucker and even the wife I guess in a way and like the other like people coming in while I do like that and don't mind it I'm glad that a majority of the film is with Nicolas Nicholas Cage, Samuel Jackson talking to each other, bantering, and then by the end when the movie ends and like Nick Cage is like free on the loose, he was in jail and now he's just kind of out going to goddamn Canada. They kind of respect each other. I was like, you know what? You almost killed me or I thought you were going to kill me. Took my goddamn watch and he's like, you know what? Keep it. You're going to need it to tell, you know, where Canada is. And I really like that. However, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I guess it does. Like he's a criminal and then like Samuel Jackson is kind of like the bystander. It shouldn't work. I think it does. It's a lot of fun still. Just seeing them go away, go with their separate ways samuel jackson is reunited with his wife while cage is going off to canada or supposedly canada maybe he'll you know this isn't canada this is i don't know what's constant i don't know also it is weird seeing samuel jackson not be a badass i think the first movie i saw him in was pulp fiction or the avengers it's either one of those two and he's such a badass character seeing him being in this kind of suburban neighborhood being fearful of his life by nicholas cage was a bit weird for me i'm not gonna lie so in the end amos and andrew was a lot of fun it was a satire on on just kind of nosy ass neighbors the cops the stigma around perspectives between samuel jackson and nicholas cage brad dorf is a hilarious character he's a dumbass but he's a lot of fun and then by the end of the movie no one really gets hurt well i guess aside from the sheriff he like gets tied up falls down a bunch of stairs for some reason that really hurts him but no one got killed which was good so yeah this movie is a lot of fun this is so 
Now out of all of these movies, I think this one, Matchstick Man, is my favorite because it's a movie about a man trying to get out of a con artist's life and reconnect with his daughter and trying to figure out what to do after this because being a con artist isn't really the best choice or the best way to live a life and how all of that will just kind of crumble down because of a lie. So just like with Amos and Andrew, you have Nicolas Cage being crazy. He has OCD. He has to like shut the door three times. He opens it and counts one, two, three, closes it. It's weird but hilarious. He's got a germaphobic kind of thing going on where he doesn't like germs and he doesn't want people wearing shoes in his house. So when Sam Rockwell comes in, always has to tell him to take off your goddamn shoes. His daughter as well. At first, he's very hesitant because it's his daughter. He's seen her for the first time in like, I guess 15 years or something like that. A very long time. He's never met him. And then whenever he needs pills, he goes to that doctor or therapy. He's having that statement of being like, I need my pills and whatnot. All of that was fun to watch. You know, Nicolas Cage being at his best. Sam Rockwell, I'm not gonna lie. I think I have the least to say about him. He's good in this role there's kind of that friend that helps cage but also cons him in the long run where near the end you find out that not only they help him conning other people into giving money but also he conned nicholas cage himself took a majority of his money lied about a bunch of stuff but still thanked him because over time he's like you know what you ain't so bad and then i guess looking back on it his kind of laid back nature makes sense as to what happens at the end as well because i didn't think anything of it i thought that was just his character just kind of this laid back con artist but no it turns out he's the one that was the biggest con and then i think the best part about this movie is the bonding between him and his daughter at first it's very awkward and very funny whenever he does his whole ocd stuff she finds it funny she doesn't find it off-putting or weird at all she's kind of amused by it her accepting her father right away not kind of being like oh you're weird and kind of crazy he also has like twitchy eyes as well because he needs to be on these meds and pills throughout these sequences you start seeing that hey he does have something much more than you know being a con artist he's happy he seems happy he doesn't seem happy when he was with his wife but with his daughter entering his life he's like you know what there's a chance i can get out of this and be happy he like takes her to bullying and whatnot he tells her about his con artist stuff which is a mistake because that may have accidentally got them in trouble and it kind of does it gets him in an argument with sam rockwell and all that stuff but the bond between them cooking spaghetti together having a daughter for the first time in his life it just feels good but all of it's a lie because sam rockwell's character set it all up not all of it but angela is not really his daughter at all she's also a con artist herself set up by sam rockwell and so when he goes to his ex-wife and he like tells her everything she just says i don't have a daughter all of it was a lie all of it was you know going and bullying her crying to him about his secret of being a con artist and all that stuff it tricked me it was a big twist i didn't see it coming at all because i had no reason to believe that this wasn't his daughter we would see her calling her mama and not i guess those were the hints I from that i had no reason to believe it at all that this wasn't his daughter and to find out that it wasn't his daughter at all it's heartbreaking all the fun time that they had i do think it's genuine but knowing this it does hurt it it does strain the relationship and after this he doesn't see her for like a year i think another disappointing thing is that the pills were fake or not fake but his doctor or therapist gave him these pills to show that he doesn't need these pills all of this twitches and ocd and slamming the goddamn door three goddamn times he doesn't need a pill for it he needs to solve it within his own head it's something that he needs to get over because he doesn't need medication for it this one girl her name is kathy he always sees her at the supermarket they eye each other clearly into each other and by the end he does have a kid with her she's pregnant and so despite having this fake kind of bond with this one girl Angela he uses that as a way to you know what I do want a family I do want a wife and a kid one year later both Angela and Cage they meet and instead of you know yelling at her or being angry he forgives her which I don't think I wouldn't honestly but you know maybe getting heated over it is not the best choice but either way she's not doing a con no more she did that just one time and so what I love about it is that yes the father daughter thing was fake but them bonding having a fun time that was still very much real and so when they say their goodbyes she still calls him my dad even though it was fake they still treat each other like a father and daughter which was really nice so yeah this movie matchstick men the name of it sounds really dumb i thought what the hell kind of name is that but it's a pretty good movie about wanting something more than just being a con artist as he goes through having a girl or having a daughter in his life but then learning that it's not his daughter but uses this experience as a way to be more happier in the future and future kid was a really good story that they told and i wasn't expecting it based off of what happened i thought it was gonna be a full-on like con artist type shit and it was with you know the whole father daughter thing and and it just told a story of a father and a daughter bonding with each other despite not being actual father and daughter. So yeah, watch this movie. I did spoil it, but you know, I'm assuming you've already watched it. Well, actually, I don't know. I probably should put spoilers because I've never heard of this film before, so people may not have heard of it as well. But Matchstick Men was a pretty damn good movie. Darwin, Blaster, Juarez, Speckles, Mooch. 
G-Force. Now, this is the one movie where I thought, wait a minute, he did this movie? A Disney movie about CG, guinea pigs, and rats being secret agents, trying to stop this rich guy from adding tech or chips to everything, to technology or whatever, home appliances, so that he can become evil. I don't know, because I forgot. But I was just more shocked by the fact that he actually did this movie. And to be honest, I don't know which rat or guinea pig that he even voices, because I couldn't tell. So, I I don't know. Characters are, you've got the main one, the one that's doing all the work. Okay, maybe not all the work, but the main character, the brown, white, guinea pig rat thing. You've got the one girl who likes guys coming to her or whatnot, but she likes rejecting them. You've got the blind one. You've got the other one who's desperate for the girl. You've got the fat one. You've got the three mices, and you got the other hamster. I think, I think that's all the characters. You also got human characters interacting with these rats, which they do a good job of, like, trying to match what they're looking at, and, like, the rat themselves and the animals. They look good. They don't look like awfully like cg or whatnot it actually looks good and still holds up to this day so i guess that's one good thing each of the characters they have their own unique and distinctive characteristics and traits whenever they're not doing you know agent stuff they're just kind of chilling playing video games and whatnot also this movie does date itself because there's like two black eyed p songs that they kind of repeat near the beginning and i also think one of them singing like i'm a barbie girl so this movie came out like 2009 it does date that because i remember like black eyed peas being a big thing back around that time and then there's also like a fly cam they're working with like all types of animals there's just fly flying around being used as a cam it follows them to this like store animal store where they all get split up because like the humans working with them they're working for someone else like it's sticker agents or whatever the government by the end they acknowledge the fact that they are superior and they are good agents and are needed whenever they call them or whatnot but most of this film is more like y'all are crazy the two humans i forgot their name working with these rats are like yeah you know these animals they can talk and do stuff and no one believes them but if you guys couldn't tell i'm really just don't have much to say about this movie the movie's okay it's not a bad movie it's a disney kids movie so that's why i was more like oh, okay you know i'll watch it but i know for a fact that this is not for me and i'm gonna enjoy it at least a little bit and that's what happened i enjoyed it a little bit and didn't really have much to say about it at all really aside from the references and how the movie dates itself using the song what they're saying and whatnot the jokes and whatnot they all eventually stop this evil corporation and again by the end they get acknowledged by the government so in the end g-force it's a movie not for me but i thought it was okay the trust this is another movie where i got really excited to watch because it's got elijah wood i really liked him in the maniac remake betrayed this innocent look while also being a bit crazy and psychotic at the same time so i was really excited for this movie i thought it was gonna be good and i don't know why i thought that because this movie was okay by the end i guess it gets interesting whenever elijah wood and nicholas cage fight but getting there it's like these two cops are not even two cops but i think cage is a cop and elijah wood is the evidence person i think and the reason why they're like doing these heinous things going against what their job is doing is because they're bored at least elijah wood he's bored he hates his job and he's like you know what why not do this i don't like my job might as well do some heinous things nick cage on the other hand has some other kind of ideas and motives but throughout the whole film you're led to believe that he's with him as well just kind of bored with his life wanting to mess around and then as time goes on the more stealing that they do it escalates at first they just kind of steal or whatnot and then it turns into you know killing some people here and there and you see the change in elijah wood's character where he's very uncomfortable he does doesn't know how to feel about this he feels like he's being used he feels like he doesn't like this he thought he did the stealing stuff okay sure but killing an actual human person a bit too far for him however cage is like come on kid do the job steal and kill and that's kind of the best part about the film it's just i don't think anything adds up you have two actors that are good and they do what they can do or at least the best that they can do with what they're given but i don't know it feels like all right there's never one moment where i thought man it's a good ass movie it was just kind of this constant mediocre okay feeling that i got where nothing bad is happening it's more they should have been better and i don't know why that isn't these people hate their job so they have a heist side job and steal stuff that sounds interesting but also at the same time it feels like i don't really feel anything about this movie at all it's more all right that was a cool like 90 minutes an hour 33 minutes you know okay also rufus for supernatural is in this movie i would just like to acknowledge that because you know supernatural fan right here but i think this movie should have been good and i guess it is good in some parts but overall as a film you know it was whatever it had its moments 
and whatnot. By the end, Elijah Wood figures that Nicolas Cage knew like some of these people, I think, and just wanted to kill them while also having a heist on the side as well. And then it pisses off Nick Cage. He like holds him at his collar, trying to kill him. And then it gets kind of weird where it cuts and then goes to a shootout between the two. I thought the way that was handled and edited was really weird. I don't know why that was the case, but by the end, Elijah Wood does kill Nick Cage, getting rid of him because he's probably not a good person. But despite that, despite saving himself, killing Nick Cage and trying to get this woman out of the city because they did kidnap this woman, you know by the end, he's trying to do the good thing. But he was already, you know, way too deep into this whole thing. And by the end, the cops come in, they kill him, and that's how the movie ends. So because both characters were already, you know, in too deep with heist and stealing stuff, they're already caught by the database and whatnot. And by the end, both of them do not make it out alive. So this movie, I thought it should have been better based off of the premise of being a heist film with Elijah Wood and Nick Cage, but in the end, it was alright. <laughs> Dog Eat Dog. This is a movie that I still don't know how I feel about. On my notes, I did not write good or okay as the overall film. I just wrote I liked it. And I don't know whether this is a good movie or not. But I do like it. Because you're watching three men, three guys who were in prison for a very long time. Getting out of it and trying to fit into society now. Where they're making references to who the hell is Taylor Swift. And what the hell is Facebook and whatnot. Like all that was funny. But trying to see them navigate how to talk to girls. How to deal with the system and whatnot. That was the most interesting part i think what makes it kind of not i guess kind of hard to say that's good is the weird music video editing there's one scene where they're like already cocaine and jumping around and shit and the way that was edited was kind of weird i did not like that fun scene to watch so the three main characters you got diesel the bald guy you have troy nicholas cage and then you have mad dog played by willem dafoe and the movie opens up with him at his like i think wife's house or ex-wife at the house doing some drugs watching tv and when his wife and i'm assuming daughter comes home or maybe ex-wife I don't know, but they have an argument and whatnot. He cleared things up with her. She's bigger than him, by the way. It leads to her finding porn on her laptop. And so because he's just really annoyed by the nagging, he decides, you know what? I'm gonna kill my wife. And so the movie opens up, killing his wife and killing the girl. And I thought this movie was gonna be crazy. That's the impression that I got based off of the opening scene because it went to zero to a hundred real quick. It just really escalated like that far. I was like, wait a minute. If this is what this movie is gonna be about, I'm gonna be really excited. The movie wasn't that, but you have me interested. Let's see where you go. So Diesel, he's getting with the girl. This girl seems interested in him. Escalated to go to a hotel room. And he doesn't like the fact that she starts asking questions about what music he likes. And he gets really pissed off by that because he's afraid that she's not going to like him because he doesn't know anything about music or pop culture because he's been in prison. And this is like the best part of his character or like the best scene from him because it's him kind of being real defensive, not wanting to open up to the fact that he doesn't know what the hell he likes because he's been in prison. And so because of that, he rages out, he yells at her, ruining a chance to get with that girl he regrets it just not quite knowing how to fit in because he doesn't want to feel like an idiot and so because of that that got to him and that led into him not getting into this girl anymore troy nicholas cage's character he's the guy that hates the system and is the reason as to why they get missions or request still money or whatnot because he wants to get as much money as he wants to go live his own life and not worry about having to work a nine to five job but because of that it gets into really dangerous territories it puts him and the other boys in danger because there's probably one instance where they don't know what the hell they're doing or they've made a mistake so he is the mastermind he doesn't want to try to fit in into society in the system he wants to get out of it find another way a loophole around the system and then mad dog willem dafoe this is a guy who is not fit to be in society no more throughout the movie he's always like can i kill this person can i kill them he always has the itch to kill one it's hilarious but also like okay this guy is clearly he should have stayed in prison because he's always doing drugs and always wants to kill people whenever they're on these missions and whatnot so not very good not very fitting in at all so he's like the one dude that's like nope don't want him here and so on one mission or i guess it's not even missions they're not called missions but i'm gonna call them missions where they need like money for this one guy for this other guy and what happens is willem dafoe being a bad dog shoots him there's a big head explosion it's a bit blurred but it was still really cool seeing his head explode that's when they fuck up and they have to like get this maid and baby somewhere nick cage has to stay around and kill the wife because they don't want to leave evidence behind it's the start and domino effect of the downfall of these guys because they were fine at first but now they're starting to fall apart Gizu is with mad dog getting the body away trying to hide it once they get to the lighthouse or whatever they're at he sees multiple bodies and realizes that okay mad dog isn't fit for this world because just before he just confessed the fact that he just wants a friend he does like him and just wants to be you know not alone and that was a genuine moment for mad dog he wants to stop doing drugs stop killing people want a new life a new future right but whenever he sees all those dead bodies diesel makes a decision of being like okay you're not fit and i gotta kill you and he does and you see mad dog movie he's insane you don't really feel empathetic towards him until 
until this very moment just a little bit though not fully but it's more like he's a dog crying for help calls Nick Cage and like something happened and he probably told him a lie but say that something happened and he had to die the second one to go is Diesel himself in this really weird edited car chase now I don't know if he actually dies or not I'm gonna assume that he does because he gets in a car crash and it slow-mos of him kind of like I guess dying and they don't really explain or elaborate further at the end of the film whether he dies or not because both the other characters died so I'm gonna assume that Diesel dies as well in this like supermarket car chase thing really weird edited way but he's done for Nicolas Cage he goes in his neighborhood and earlier in the film they were dressed as cops fake cops in his neighborhood beating on a black person and people they get paid back after they're done beating him he steals a car from this couple and he explains to them that everything will be fine you know he's not gonna kill them he's been through some shit in this film he's tired of it but as long as they do what he does it's all gonna be good but the luck runs out because the cops get to him and he becomes I guess in a selfish act instead of trying to lower down his gun there's a shootout which you think gets this couple killed which was a selfish move on Nick Cage Nick Cage gets shot he shoots like one cop I think or two cop but by the end he's also done for so all of our three main characters while they get out of prison trying to fit in into society they can't quite do that and so you just see them kind of gradually going to their inner demons killing people accidentally doing bad things which is what led to their downfall and death so despite all of this though I still like I don't I guess by the end I still like this film I liked it but I can't really say whether it's okay or good for some reason I'm having a hard time kind of saying that right now yeah I don't know I guess dog eat dog I still like this movie I'm not a genie and then finally army of one this movie is fucking ridiculous based off of a real life incident this one dude gary i think is his name it's gary right yeah it's gary who like travels to pakistan to go and assassinate uh this one guy what's his name bin latin or something like that and they show that at the end of the film actual footage of the actual guy who's all like white beard white hair all that stuff but the best part about this movie is nicholas cage like i don't know why he accepted this role but he's just ridiculous in his movie he has a very nasally voice which makes him annoying but the things that come out of his mouth are ridiculous stupid and hilarious at the same time so i had a fun time watching this movie and because it's based off of a real life event it plays out kind of the same way with you know adding an extra time because it's a movie going into it i didn't know anything about it i didn't even know about the incident i don't know the actual year of the events because i've never heard of it so i don't know if it was just before my time before the 2000s this is either going to be the most enjoyable movie for you or the most annoying because it is not a good movie in any way but if you're down with it and you have a feeling of you know let me just watch a fun movie i guess army of one is for you nicholas cage is playing this guy who has a nasally voice who is angry at everyone okay maybe not everyone but he's like he has an issue with everything he gets bullied in life as a kid but then for some reason here's i guess god he gets this iconic sword or whatever and believes that this sword can kill this man in pakistan which is stupid and ridiculous but okay he's going with it he's at this bar he has issues or whatever a man comes up to him to say like let's play darts for drinks and money all that stuff with the knife though and so when it's his turn he throws a knife impales the man with the knife he works at this grocery store or i think he i don't even know but the way he's walking around the store just being annoying as fuck was hilarious and then he meets an old friend they rekindle now i don't know why this lady got with him she apparently had a crush on him back in high school and he also did as well okay whatever he's at the casino doing something there's a boat scene now this is the moment where i was like okay this is clearly satire this is you know pokey fun at this whole situation of this guy who wanted to go to pakistan to kill a man with the sword the samurai in pakistan wanting to sail all the way to pakistan not realizing that he doesn't know anything about boats how to drive it all that stuff he gets questioned by the cop and he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about with his boat stuff so he's like okay you know what screw that plan i'll do another plan he also on a consistent base keeps telling people like i'm gonna go kill this man and no one believes him because it's ridiculous he feels the first time when he does this whole flying wingsuit thing the film opens up with that with him and his wingsuit by a narrator there's a goddamn narrator in this movie for some reason and then he's finally in pakistan saying it's a nice country he's there for like 30 days or something known as the samurai he's riding on like these donkeys and whatnot and he just looks ridiculous he does not fit in here whatsoever how do you even get a bedroom i don't know did he bring money i think he brought money right i don't even know i'll be honest whatever it may be it's dumb and ridiculous and i pretty much really liked it it's like this is so stupid and dumb it's comical and clearly his plan doesn't work it fails i don't think he succeeds in killing the man i think and you know i don't even know to be honest i forgot about the plot all i cared about was seeing nick Nicholas Cage playing this stupid, ridiculous, funny character. That's all I really cared for. By the end, he gets back to his, I guess, family. She accepts him again, which I don't know why she would, but she just does. And then I think that's how the movie ends of like the actual movie. And then it shows clips of the actual person and whatnot. But this goddamn movie, so much fun, so stupid, so ridiculous. So if you're in a mood to watch dumb shit happen, Army of One 2016 is for you. 
And that was it for Nicolas Cage's comedy films. All of these six films are enjoyable films to an extent. I like some more than others. Maybe, you know, Matchstick Man and Dog Eat Dog. Maybe those. But the other ones like The Trust, G-Force, goddamn G-Force. Wouldn't say that there's a bad film on this list, but I didn't find them as bad. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching.